Mark, thanks for being with me this morning. No doubt, Morgan. Thanks for having me. What are you watching as we go into this, what appears to be or poised to be yet another volatile trading day? Yeah, so I mean, this market's definitely not for the faint of heart. I mean, it's, it's ugly, right? It's up 5 6% one day, down 10% the next. So, you know, what we're really telling our clients right now is, you know, the market's already down about 25% from its peak. In a bear market, whether there's a recession or not, the market doesn't care. The drawdown is still in that 25 to 30% range overall. So you're in that zip code right now, right? If you haven't sold, I don't think right now is the time to be selling because once you actually bottom the next year, the next 12 months look like this. So if you're following a recession, market's up 35 to 40%. If you're following a non-recession bear market, the market's up 25 to 30%. So, you know, what we're really going to be paying attention to today is which stocks are dragging us down the lowest, which stocks are, are really helping to, you know, kind of smooth things out. And they might actually be positive today. Clorox, as an example, is a stock that's been on fire. However, you know, if this if and when this virus blows over, hopefully, which is sooner than later, what happens to Clorox at that point? Because it's run up so much. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's on our radar for today. All right, you mentioned Clorox. Are, are there names that, especially given the fact that we have seen such, such deep sell-offs on such a broad basis uh, in recent days, are there names that you're buying right now? Yeah, so, you know, we've made, uh, so we were running with about 20% cash in our select equity strategy as we were taking profits in the fourth quarter of last year. We put 75% of that cash to work this week. So we are buying right now. So one of the things that I think makes sense for people to consider is more of like a bunker down strategy. So Clorox is going to do really well as long as this virus is front and center. I think once it blows over, Clorox is going to give back some of those gains. So we're looking for companies where there's a good long term secular growth story still intact, but they're going to hold up a little better when this virus is, is still in, in full force. So it's always darkest before the dawn, D-A-W-N. So we have Domino's Pizza because people are going to order in. You've got Activision because a lot of people are going to bunker down and they're going to play video games. You've got Walmart because they're selling out of toilet paper and ramen noodles. And you've got Netflix because for anyone that doesn't like video games, they're going to be binge watching. So that, that would be our strategy for kind of, you know, treading water during these uncertain times. Okay, I like that. Don, we want to bring attention to the market-wide circuit breaks, which we may actually breach again at the open today. If the S&P falls 7% or more, the level there would be 2352.15. That would trigger another 15-minute trading halt. We've already seen three of these since last Monday. Your take, Mark, on the fact that we have seen some of these halts triggered and whether it reflects back or what, what you would say to, to investors who have not been in this type of environment before? Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's a tough situation when, when we're looking at 5 to 10% moves in, in every single day. So I just had a client in here yesterday, and we're looking to do a 401k rollover. But we can't do it on a day when the market's up 6%, because then he might be out of the market for the next day when, you know, when, it's, when it's up another 5%, 6%, right? So you know, it's, it's very, very difficult to navigate these times right now. What I will say is that 2350, right in that range there, that was the December 2018 low. So there should be some support at that level. If we fall through that, there's more downside ahead, right? We could easily go down to 2000 at that point. What we're expecting right now, as far as fair value goes, is we're expecting earnings for this year on the S&P 500 to be about 140 yeah. bucks a share okay. at a 17 and a half multiple that's 2450